Let's see. I can't. Mm. Okay, people, all about the train. Destination feels sound. Be prepared to a lot of sexism, a lot of anti Semitism, and more betrayals than the season of Game of Thrones Girl. This is a story of Rosalind Franklin. Yeah, that one. Do you see it? Do you see it? Yes, girl, work them pearls. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to Sassy Science. Today, we're going to talk about yet another amazing woman, Queen, who was indeed, as you may already guessed, robbed. But let's start from the beginning, shall we? Rosalind Franklin was born in 1928 in London into a Jewish British family. Both sides of the family were very involved in social movements and Rosalind herself was very much into the suffragist movement. Like honestly sane. And who doesn't love a feminist? Am I right? She showed incredible abilities from a very young age and when she passed her matriculation exam with six distinctions she actually earned a scholarship to go to uni but she gave it up for a refugee student who was also deserving of it. Because that's the one we're talking about. That good. Like, she's a saint, okay? When she told her father she wanted to do physical chemistry, her father uh, refused to help her, even though she, he had supported her up until then. And he retired the money he was giving to her at the moment. But it was her aunt that actually supported her during that time. Women supporting women. Yay! Talking about women supporting women, when she was at university, that's when she met um, Adrienne Weyler, a French refugee who would be one of her supporters for her entire life. So, yay! Women supporting women. Yeah. Even though she started her whole degree with insecurity, she passed with second class honors, and that's where the spiral of sadness and rage um, begins. After finishing her degree, she receives a research fellowship to go work with Will Norwich, who would later become a Nobel Prize in chemistry. But apparently the thing didn't go that well, because besides being a pain in the ass at the moment, he was under heavy drinking. So yeah, she literally said that he had made her despise him completely. The poor thing. So she quits. You go, girl. She quits and she's the British Cura to do her PhD on the porosity of coal. In this time, sh she demonstrates how compounds leave coal in order of molecular weight. Oh, this has been hard, girl. Who would have said I'm a PhD in physics? Ugh. So, in this PhD, she demonstrates that compounds leave coal in order of molecular weight as the temperature increases. That was great not just for predicting how good a certain coal would be in terms of fuel, but also to get a better understanding and make better um, gas equipment such as gas masks. Max? <laughs> masks. After the end of World War II and once she had finished her PhD, she contacts um, her friend Adrienne to find a new position and she puts her in, in contact with a group of Jacques Merin in Paris. So she moves to Paris and there she learns everything there is to know about X-ray crystallography, which is basically what she would do the rest of her life. Besides getting used to the French way of life, if you know what I mean. I can relate to that. Bougie. Among other things, she said the iron rearrangement of coal when it was transformed into graphite. Get my outfit now? No? Well, it's okay. I'll make another video about it anyway, so... Fast forward to 1951. She gets a position in King's College. Yes, King's College, bitch! You might want to reconsider that. John Randall, who knew how much of an expert in X-ray crystallography she had become, hides her and tells her to have a deeper look in the unsolved problem of DNA. Before her arrival, Maurice Wilkins was already using X-ray crystallography to try and solve the DNA problem. Don't forget this name, because it's going to be very important in like the next minute. Just so you have an idea of how fucked up the sexism was back then in the King's College, 
women were not let into the professor's room. Fucked up. Mm -hmm. I know. Wilkin was not there at the moment she was hired, and when he came back, he thought she was her assistant. It was a really bad beginning to a really, really bad relationship. I mean, she was basically doing research with the enemy. This is where it gets really dark. Along with her PhD student Raymond Gosling, he was with Ryan Gosling, call me, who was actually Wilkin's previous PhD student because drama mama. Together, they both discovered that there were actually two types of DNA. They named it DNA A and DNA B. So the research on both was divided between Franklin and Wilkins, just so that there wouldn't be any conflict between them. Wilkins took DNA A, because he already had previous proof that was false, that it had a helix form. It was actually a double helix, like old DNA. And Franklin took B. So as I've just told you, everyone thought that A DNA had a helix structure, but after Rosalind Franklin took some asymmetrical pictures, she was not really sure she so she thought it was better to wait. In November 1951, she gives a presentation on her results to her colleagues at King's College. Among the public to this talk are the world famous, worldwide famous, world renowned Watson and Creek. They were also studying on the same subject, the structure of DNA, and they had been invited there by Wilkins, who, if you remember, was like the arch enemy of Franklin. I know it's getting complicated, just bear with me, just like two minutes. From then on, Watson and Creek start seeing Franklin's material through Wilkins, most of the times without even her permission, most of the times without her even knowing. And according to some studies, a lot earlier than Watson suggests. In May 1952, Franklin and her PhD student get the super ultra mega famous the RuPaul of Life Science Pictures, Photo 51. This has been described as the most important picture in the history of life sciences. That hinted that the structure of DNA might not be just one helix, but actually true. But actually two. I mean, a double helix, which is what it actually is. It's now the beginning of 1953 and oh boy, oh boy, this is gonna get hot. She places two papers where she acknowledges a double helix structure on DNA A or A DNA. At this moment, she's planning to leave Cambridge for Verbeck, where she would be working till the end of her days. In the middle of this political, scientific, emotional spiral, there's a moment that's very well uh, told by one of the perpetrators of it, Mr. Watson, actually Professor Watson, but who cares? Uh, in his book, which I don't remember the title because I'm bad at preparing this, but I'll leave it here. Anyway, she recounts it very vividly in his autobiography. So Watson traveled to King's College with a copy of Pauling's model for DNA structure because he knew it was wrong and he was intending to discuss about it with Wilkins. Seeing that Wilkins was not in his office, he went down to uh, Franklin's lab and he tried to convince her to change their model before Pauling had realized he had made a mistake. Watson then suggested that Franklin hadn't analyzed the data well. So basically he tried to mansplain her her own results. Bitch. Obviously she got mad and she basically vented at them. Wilkins trying to console his friend, show him picture 51. That amazing picture she had taken. She did not know and it changed the way they saw their model forever. And it's very unfair that that happened that way. But hold on, we ain't done, we ain't done. So, so Wilkins Franklin and her PhD student published a nature paper in the same issue of nature as Watson and Crick. So it seemed that they had made the model without any experimental data and they had gotten the experimental data robbed. 
Yeah. Right, like they were only listed in the acknowledgements and not for the experimental data, but just for the ideas, conclusions, fruitful discussions. What the fuck? She moved then to Birkbeck when she spent the rest of her days as a researcher, uh, researching various viruses, till she died um, in 1958 as a result of an ovarian cancer. And rumor hasn't that the X-rays might have something to do with it. Oh, but we ain't done. Even after her death. Even, even after her death, bitch. Like, four years later, Watson, Crick, and Wilkins win the Nobel Prize. Win the Nobel Prize. Win the Nobel Prize. And they don't acknowledge Rosalind Franklin in any of the speeches. I don't know if you heard of it, but I just can't. Literally. Bitch, what? Who? Excuse me? I mean, in time with Wilson and Creek would acknowledge what she had done, but it was way later. And in the case of Watson especially, very reluctantly. And I don't guess, because this is not a video about him, but bitch, he got some ideas. Some nasty ideas. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna give him that promo, but seriously, ooh. And well, and that's it. Um, right now, I guess you will feel very sad and very angry about this, and you should be. I mean, but at the same time, it's only through representation of minorities and scientists that we get that not to happen. So if you're considering to be a scientist, if you're already on your way to be a scientist, be a fucking scientist. I mean, go for it. Even if it's hard, because it's going to be hard, because, I mean, we're underrepresented for a reason, but, Go get it, girl. And I guess that's it for today. Um, if you liked it, just give it a thumbs up, comment below. I don't know. Who do you think I should do next? Comment below. And if you don't subscribe, people who deny climate change win. So it's up to you. Till next time.